Yeah, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Maya, she's almost my neighbor in Denmark. He lives very close to the border in Denmark, and uh, 200 years ago, we were also Danish in Kiel, so that's just a historical sidestep. Um, the topic is clinical innovations in breast cancer imaging, and um, this is, so to say, coming back to the roots. We started seven years ago with um, elastography imaging in the University Hospital in Kiel, and um, I think we have some experience with this um, topic. What you have is the morphological information of ultrasound, and we combine this with uh, the tissue stiffness estimation, and what we get is the elastography. As a result, we have a tissue stiffness imaging. So what is the possible um, influence of shear wave to the breast cancer management? We don't want to touch the Byrids 2 lesions. They are absolutely benign, 100% benign. So we don't want to touch them. No upgrades with these lesions. We also do not want to change the management of the Byrids 4B lesions or the Byrids 4C or Byrids 5 lesions. They need the biopsy to prove for the histological um, result for the cancer. We want to focus on the Byrids 3 field and on the Byrids 4A field. And especially the Byrids 3 field is a very, very large area which we have to focus on. We know different shear wave elastography criteria. We know benign shear wave features if um, the signal is very homogeneous, if the elasticity maximum is very low, so less than 80 kilopascal, and if the color is very dark, dark blue or blue. If it's suspicious, we look for irregular shape, for heterogeneous elasticity images, for very stiff tissue with elasticity maximum values over 160 kilopascal, or if the color is red. So red means dangerous. As you can see here, very stiff, around 180 kilopascal, red, like in the Western world, the stop sign. And you look here, the blue color or the black color, so very low elasticity values. And if you look here, Byrid 3 findings, if we have this in the normal B-mode imaging, a Byrid 3, and we see a very stiff area, a very heterogeneous area, we consider this made to upgrade to biopsy. And the other question, what to do with the Byrid 4A? This in combination with the turquoise color to blue or dark blue color, we may could downgrade this to a normal follow-up and to prevent the patient from an intervention. What is classical for cancer if we look here on some examples? <coughs> classical for cancer is that we see here this uh, hypoechoic speculated lesion, and this is overlapped by a very heterogeneous <coughs> color mostly red and orange, so a very stiff region. And classical for cancer is that we capture high shear wave speeds. What we do see here, and that is what we also often uh, can observe, is that we have a very suspicious lesion around the lesion. We have very stiff parts, but in the middle of the lesions, we have almost no signal. The question is, what's the reason for that? Sometimes the shear wave, um, they are so fast that they can't be captured. That is one of the explanations. The other is that we may have so stiff cancers that the shear wave cannot penetrate in the center of the lesion. And if we look here, this is the same lesion but with a penetration mode. And this shows you, you can also capture a signal in the lesion and you can also may convince um, this signal cap that you have here in the standard mode. Let me tell you something about the basic principles, what is important to know. First, you need a lot of gel, really a lot of gel, and only a very, very gentle compression. This is very important. This cystic lesion you can see here, unequic dorsal enhancement, uh, well-defined lesion, and this is overall blue overlapped. So that means it's a very soft area, a very homogeneous area, that means benign. And this is the start of the examination, and this is after 10 seconds. So it looks exactly at the end, like at the beginning. What are we looking for? And um, do we have um, evaluation tools? Um, how can we describe the lesion? There's a very helpful 
um, evaluation by Tosaki and Fukuma, and they um, described a pattern one. So this is, like you have seen in the slide before, an overall blue, no findings. That means it is a benign finding. A pattern two means we have artifacts with turkey's color, with vertical cords, interior of the lesion, and also at the uh, outer parts of the lesions. And the suspicious findings, they start with pattern three. That is a positive finding. You see around the lesion a colored turkey's area. And pattern four, you remember, a very heterogeneous signal, red color, in the lesion, also in the dorsal parts and in the outer parts of the lesion. So three and four means suspicious finding. Back to important principles, pre-compression, and that is really important. Remember, gentle compression is good. Here you see almost no compression, and if you look here, here is a rib, and this is a distance to the skin, so it's a quite large distance. If you compress more, you see the rib comes up, even more compression, ribs comes more up, and that is a very strong compression. And what happens? Here, you have an overall benign blue finding, and this is a cystic lesion. If you compress more, you see more artifacts, and stronger compression now, it's getting orange, red. And if you compress even more, you think it's a cancer. So that can bring you to a false positive finding, so that a cyst looks like a cancer. If you do not remember, just gentle compression is important. Another case here, cystic lesion again, and here we have a void area. We have no shear waves in this fluid, so that is also characteristic for a benign finding. Especially important for you in your daily practice, you have many, many patients with cystic lesions, and um, that is helpful also to prevent the patients from shorter follow-ups, and um, this is really helpful also here in this viscous, um, viscous cyst, uh, homogeneous uh, blue area, a blue signal like a soft region. False positives. How can we recognize um, the strong compression? If we look here, it looks in the B mode benign, but we see here the red color in the lesion, around the lesion, and what is important, we see also the turkey's color or orange color here close to the skin, and that is one sign that we may compress too hard. And we repeat the compression, and we see a very low pressure here. Subcutaneous fat layer is blue, so this is an adequate pressure, and this is a typical benign finding like a um, cystic lesion. Another false positive case, we have scar, for example, or we have uh, fibrous fiber adenomas or calcified oil cyst. As you see here in the mammogram, a very, very... Um, large calcification, and that causes dorsal shadowing, a complex lesion here in the B mode, and you see here also a signal gap in the center of the lesion and around a stiff finding. So keep this in mind if you have probably benign findings after breast conserving therapy or also after um, normal um, excisions um, of the breast. This is important to know. Other false negative uh, cases are very small cancers. So if uh, cancer is only two, three, four millimeters, or if we have very soft cancers, like a mucinous cancer, or also DCIS. And if you look here, this as an example, this DCIS, there's a hypervascularization, which is suspicious, and this is overall blue. So that is a false negative finding. And also this here, a two centimeter DCIS, very suspicious in MRI, small vascularization, and almost homogeneous blue vertical cords, so that means a pattern two finding. This is an example also for a false negative. There is no technology which uh, um, offers you 100% sensitivity and specificity, so we, we know that we have also false negatives. Another um, little problem is if the lesion is very, very deep in the breast, here we see um, 1.6 centimeters to skin distance, 2.1 and 2.4 centimeters. So the problematic depth is, that is my experience, around 3 centimeters. I think 2.5 is okay, there shouldn't be a problem, but um, 3, 4, 5 centimeters in the depths, that is a problem. But you can convince also these problems if you move the patient in another um, position. So 
This can make the breast smaller, and then you can convince also these problems so that you can uh, receive also shear wave signals. Another thing is if you have quite large lesions, if the lesion is larger than your field of view, like this really big cancer here, typical cancer, and if you look here, you have a signal um, white area here in the center and around a little stiff, stiffer part also here, but that is, you must say, it's a false uh, negative result. Elastography looks benign in that case, but in comparison and in correlation with the mammogram, there is no doubt that that is a cancer. So it's a Byrds 5 finding, and you um, will not trust um, this elastography in that case. So again, um, before we start with some training cases for you, this is a pattern 1 finding, homogeneous blue, benign. Pattern 2, vertical artifacts around the lesion, and in the lesion, pattern 2 is benign. Three suspicious, four suspicious, just to remember them. So the first case, who is for benign? Who is for malignant? Classical benign finding. Unequic finding, white area here in the center, that is classical for a cyst. Next case, you look at that. Oval lesion, very well defined, but it's a solid lesion. So what would you recommend? Would you recommend shorter follow-up or would you recommend biopsy? So here elastography is helpful. You see a blue signal, you see some vertical cords. It's a very soft lesion, 35 kilopascal maximum. So that tends you to a benign finding. And that is a case where you can prevent your patient from further biopsy. It's a complex fiber adenoma. So complex fiber adenoma is also the explanation that you have these turkey's colors around here. Normal myxoid fiber adenomas, they are very, very blue and very, very homogeneous blue. Another case here, hypoacric lesion, not well defined. And this corresponds with this turkey's orange color. It's an invasive lobular cancer. We can also perform 3D images. And uh, we got recently the 3D probe in the last year. And it's really impressing how we can describe the lesions in all the different planes. And this is also a highly suspicious finding, a large cancer, which you can observe then in any plane you want. Another case here, little architectural distortion hypoechoic in that part, by its four finding, and this correspondence with very stiff regions, with orange, yellow, turquoise color, a pattern three finding. This is in high-grade DCIS. This is classic for you. Hypoechoic, speculated, corresponding with red color, very heterogeneous, it's a classical cancer. And here, it looks quite well defined, this lesion, and its correspondence with Blue color, orange color, and this is also very stiff, also a cancer. And here you see a hypoechoic lesion in the breast in the axillary region, but dorsal shadowing, very stiff in that area. And this is also an invasive ductal cancer. So let me tell you at the end of the lecture the most important results um, published by Wendy Burke for the multi-center study. What is important, if we look here, in the normal breast ultrasound, we can receive specificity with B mode of 61% and sensitivity of 97%. And if we add homogeneity with shear wave or Emax or e color, we preserve sensitivity values of 97%, but we have better specificity values from 61 to 71 to 77 to 78%. So this is almost 20%. Um, in the winning situation for higher specificity in the question Byrds 3, Byrds 4a. We also worked on the question what to do with the Byrds 3 findings. Is there maybe any solution to downgrade these lesions and to prevent the patient from shorter follow-up? If you look in this line, Byrds combined with e-color, black or dark blue, we have 110 more cases out of 212 cases in the Byrds 3 group to downgrade in Byrds 2. And if we look here, less than 20 kilopascal, that is a clue, less than 20 kilopascal for Emax in combination with Byrds 3, we can also downgrade in a new Byrds 2 group. 
There are a lot of papers in the MEDLINE, over 60 papers. And um, if we look at the stiffness of the breast cancer, there are here in this um, diagram 15 peer-reviewed publications, and they all reported that malignant masses are significantly stiffer than the benign masses. So the red masses are malignant and the blue uh, are uh, benign. So this is significant in all the papers available in the MEDLINE. And which is important that each shear wave feature added to BIRATS, we can increase the specificity. If we add to BIRATS 3, the red color, we should upgrade these lesions to biopsy because these lesions have a higher potential for malignancy. And if we look for the BIRATS 4A with light blue or dark blue color in combination, we could downgrade to follow up. And we also could downgrade BIRATS 3 lesions in combination with a dark blue color in shear wave imaging and with an elasticity maximum of less than 20 kilopascal. Other improvements of shear wave are that um, we have in the biopsy proven DCIS a higher risk that this is upgraded in an invasive ductal cancer at surgical excision if we have a very stiff lesion with high elasticity maximum values. And this is also helpful that we do not underestimate malignancy when we use the core biopsy with a 14-gauge needle. And we have sufficient more and further information if we look for prognostic factors like lymphovascular invasion, lymph node involvement, and also for histological grading. And last but not least, it is important if we plan surgery together with the gynecologists and the surgeons that we know how big the cancer is, that we can exactly calculate um, the surgical size. And this is also very helpful because we know so far and we have um, ideas that it better correlates with histological size after surgery. So the conclusion is reducing the unnecessary biopsies. That is one of the major goals. And it's important that we maintain in the less than 2% malignancy rate in category three. And we know that shear wave elastography can complement conventional ultrasound for improvement of diagnostic performance. And also the cancer size estimation on shear wave may lead to a better correlation with histological size and shear wave prevents histological underestimation. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much for this presentation. We have time for a very, very quick question. Yes? Um, while doing the scan, um, do you always read from the 180 kilopascal range from the, but, or do you bring it down yeah. to the... Yeah, I, I adjust. I adjust um, also to 80 or to 100, and um, that is really important so that you have an optimal view. That was only for the presentation so that you can go up to 180. So that's not... Uh, predicted that you have to use 180 kilopascal scale. No, use it, change it. Yeah. It, it's different if you look on the original plan and on the vertical. There are differences. So far, I have no explanation for that, but that is different. And it's also different if we look with a 3D probe now. It's different um, how we measure this. For me, it is most important the highest value we receive. That is important for me, and that is suspicious. So I would not downgrade a lesion if I see maybe in the, in the orthogonal plan a lower kilopascal value. So the higher is important. Thank you very much.